we are going to open with the congregation, the all of us singing Adeste Fideles in the original Latin. All right. I'm kidding. I know one verse in Latin. But we'll just do it in American. I would say English, but we're not really good at that either. So if you would, please rise. Or not, you know. I couldn't open it either. <laughs> so to start off tonight, uh, we're going to have Anthony Westfall will be sharing the story, the legend of the candy cane. So Anthony, do you need anything set up up front here? No. No. So you're just going to come up and start talking? Yes. All right. Uh, go ahead and come on up. I'm going to ask the first trivia question. Uh, let's see. Not that one. Not that one. I want to, I want to, uh, all right. Which of the two Gospels that include details about the birth of Jesus starts with the genealogy to establish Jesus as the Messiah? <laughs> Which, uh, uh, oh, we got one hand. You're my son. You, I'm, wait. Do you really know? Yeah. Well, he knows because he memorized it. Okay. Well, I, I saw Joy's hand. I was just guessing. Luke and Matthew. No, no, no. Only one started at first. Matthew. Matthew. Uh, <laughs> Ready? Coming at you, Joy. You, you were right. You were over right. You did too much right. <laughs> okay, so if you would give your attention to Anthony, please. The Legend of the Candy Cane, written by Lori Wahlberg. One dreary evening, in the depths of November, a stranger rode into town. He stopped his horse in the front of a lonely storefront. 
The windows were boarded, and the door was shut fast. But the man looked at it and smiled. This will do. Although the short days, gray days, and long nights of November, the man worked. The township could hear the faint pam, pam, pam of his hammer and the snish, snish, snish of his saw. They could smell the sweet, clean, new scent of lumber and the deep, oily smell of new paint. But no one knew what the man was or what he was doing. The mayor hoped he was a doctor to heal his illness. The young wives hoped he was a tailor to make them beautiful dresses. The farmers hoped he was a trader for, to exchange their grain for goods. But the children had the strongest, deepest wish of them all. A wish that they did not tell their parents. A deep, quiet secret wish that none of them said out loud. No one spoke to the man. No one asked if he needed help. They just waited and watched and wondered and wished. But one small girl watched and wondered, waited and wished longer than she could stand. And one snowy day, she knocked at the stranger's door. Hello, she said. My name is Lucy. Do you need help? The man smiled warmly and, and nodded. Then he opened the door. Lucy stepped in. A long counter ran down the side of the room. Bare shelves filled the other side. In the back were dozens and dozens of barrels and crates. Could you help me unpack? The man asked. Lucy's heart sank at the sight of all the boxes. What? What if they were only barrels of nails and bags of flour? But she removed her dripping boots, hung her coat on a peg. On stocking feet, she crossed a rough wooden floor and knelt beside a crate. Please open it, the man urged. Slowly, Lucy put her hand into the box and pulled out an object wrapped in tissue. Round and heavy, it almost slipped through her fingers. Lucy trembled as she unwrapped it. It was a glass jar. Lucy gave the man a puzzled look. Go on, his nod said. So she unpacked another glass jar, and another, and another, until she was completely surrounded by jars of all shapes and sizes. Tall and thin, round and squat, jars with lids, and jars without. Now, the man said, for something to put inside, and he pulled over a huge crate, stamped with a, word, a strange word, confections. As Lucy unpacked, her eyes lit up. It was candy, her favorite candy, gumdrops. Try some, said the man. She popped one in her mouth. She could hardly unwrap fast enough. Peppermint sticks, taffy, Lollipops? Oh, and chewing gum. Wide-eyed, she looked at the man. We wished, she said. Yes, I know, said the man. And here it is. Welcome to Sonneman's Candy Store. I am John Sonneman. Soon, the small store was filled with candies, gleaming in their glass jars, raspberry suckers, and lem tiny lemon drops, brightly colored jawbreakers, and long tangles of licorice, pink and white peppermints for church, and butterscotch balls for company. Then, in the very last package, in the very last crate, there was a candy Lucy had never seen before. 
a red and white striped candy stick with a crook at the end. What is this? Lucy asked. This, Mr. Solomon explained, is a candy cane. It is very special. It is a very special Christmas candy. Why? Lucy asked. Well, tell me what letter you see. What letter do you guys see? J. J, she said. Yes, Mr. Solomon smiled. J for Jesus, who was born on Christmas Day. Now turn it over. What does it remind you of? Lucy turned the candy over in her hand. She pressed, she peered down intently. I know, she said finally. Looks like a shepherd's staff. Who are the first to find out about Jesus' birth? Mr. Sonneman asked. Shepherds in the field, Lucy answered, watching over their flocks by night. But Mr. Sonneman, what are the stripes for? Lucy asked. The man's eyes grew sad. The prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. Before he died on the cross, Jesus was whipped. He bled terribly. The red reminds us of his suffering and his blood. But then, Mr. Sonneman continued, the candy cane is white as well. When we give our lives to Christ, to Jesus, his blood washes away our sins, making us white and pure as snow. That, he said, is the story of the candy cane. Is it a secret? Lucy asked. Mr. Mr. Sonneman looked at her for a long moment. It's a story that needs to be told, he said. Will you help me share it? It was now the depths of December. The town was whipped around with by blizzard winds. For days, the sun hid itself. But every morning, Mr. Sonneman and Lucy ventured out. They wore heavy wool woolen clothes, coats and bright hand-knit scarves. And in their stuff, mitten fingers, they held each held a bag. They went to every house in town. They traveled to every farm in the county. They knocked on every door and every home. They told the story. They left a small gift and they gave an invitation. One afternoon, or on the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun finally broke through the clouds and Mr. Sonneman's store officially opened. The mayor came, feeling better than he had felt in days. The young wives came, dressed in beautiful smiles. The farmers came, eager to trade their grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wishes had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store. But they shared something more something bitter, bigger, and something better. On that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane. They told the miracle of Christ's birth, the misery of his death, and the mercy of his love. And that concludes the legend of the candy cane. Yeah. All right, so next we have Kenneth and Brian Leedy. Uh, they will be doing a saxophone bass duet, Idle Unknown. I don't know that song. <laughs> um, so Kenneth, where's mm -hmm. Kenneth? Oh, there he is, he's already up here. Okay, well they're getting set up. Um, how many days after Jesus' birth did Joseph and Mary give uh, take to name him? How many days from the day he was born until he was named? Come on, come on, come on. All right, Luke, I saw your, whoa, oh, wait, wait, wait. Christopher, whose hand was up first? Okay, Sasa. Eight. Eight, wow. Chucking at you, I love you. 
<laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, I'll do another one. Of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which one does not say anything about his birth? Wow, I saw his hand. Okay, Decky, which one? Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Wow. Nice job. I don't know who's kidding me. Wow. I got, I got more candy than I got questions, so don't sweat it. All right, ready? Uh, not ready? No. You can do one more. I can do one more? <laughs> okay, so Mary and Joseph, you've already got your hand up. You don't even know the question yet. <laughs> Mary and Joseph were betrothed. When he found out about her pregnancy, what was his response? Whoa. Okay, Leslie. <laughs> to divorce her quietly. To divorce her quietly. Good job, Leslie. All right, give that one to her. All right, are you guys ready? Okay, did, does the song actually have a title, or are you just playing yep. it? It's Jingle Bells. Okay, Jingle Bells. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> be more of a, a question for the adults. To whom did Luke address his gospel? Oh, I saw Christopher's hand first. You guys are slow. Wait a minute, you're already eating something. What? Theophilus. Theophilus, which means lover of God. I'm only giving you a little one, because you already got something. Good job, Dad. Dad. You can throw candy at him, he catches it. You throw anything else, he'll drop it. <laughs> All right, so next we have Luke coming up for story time with Luke. I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Only way expected at the last. Yeah, well. Last, first, this last, last year he talked about sinking Christmas trees in the pond. <laughs> this year there's nothing happening to deer or anything, right? Okay. All right. What about reindeer? Do you want these or not? Can you guys hear me? Grab it. Grab one. Grab one. Grab the yellow one. It has a cord. Or the red one? Or the blue one? So yeah, I guess it had me going earlier this time so they could end on a good note. <laughs> so last year I talked a lot about Christmas and the various family stories we have. And 
how disastrous that usually goes. But you know, this year I've been very much not in the Christmas spirit, I guess. I'm working on it, I'm trying to get better at it, and sort of known as the Scrooge at work, and as James and I were talking last Thursday, apparently in like the 1600s, Massachusetts, it was illegal to celebrate Christmas, and I find myself wanting to go back to that on a daily basis, but I'm working on it. Um, I think one of my favorite things is eggnog, so that's probably one of my, besides everything Jesus, like everything normal Christmas, we have eggnog kind of at the top of that. <laughs> Apparently though, that comes from a tradition where people would burn down rich people's houses if they didn't get eggnog, but <laughs> not like that much. Good there. And you know, I'm trying to get into the Christmas spirit, and we have my in-laws over, and I didn't really want to try. Am I sitting too close to this one? Scoot back to right, up against that. Turn your rump back, scoot back. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of a pacer, though. Well, we're actually working on it. We're working on a lot of things right now. Anyway, so... You move. <laughs> if you bring the mic up, you can turn it down. Put, put the mic close to your face. <laughs> 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 That's not the marks. So I'm I'm trying to compromise. My wife loves Christmas, which is why you know opposites attract, I guess. Um, so and her folks are here, and I don't want to get a Christmas tree, but we're up in Lolo for some reason, and her brother decides to cut one down with a multi tool. So we stuff it in the trunk and bring it back and stuff it in the cooler, so it sits kind of crazy. And we're decorating it. And I'm like, we need to make this more Jesus. -y. So I start hanging up little crackers on paper clips all over the house. Jesus is the bread of life. I did find out that I used to spend crackers from the ceiling with scotch tape and floor <laughs> But that's just me. And you know, I, I'm trying though. This is part, I think we should swap out all these like green branches with just crackers everywhere. <laughs> and I don't know. At my job, I have people that play Christmas music constantly, and I'm wondering which committee decided which was going to be a Christmas song. There's only like 30 of them, and like <laughs> maybe a fifth of them have anything to do with Jesus. And the rest, I'm just trying to figure out. Like I kind of dismissed everything about snow, because that's here. That's a Thanksgiving song, and in this country, that's at least a January song. It doesn't make any sense why we talk about snow. And not Christmas, it's a Christmas song. But I digress. I've decided to try to figure out how other Christmas songs can still be about Christmas. And I've decided that 12 Days of Christmas, it's not about Jesus, but it's still a Christmas song because it's about a different biblical figure. And I'll see if you guys can figure it out. It's about Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Well, it only makes sense why someone would give this much wealth and slaves to someone unless it was a Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem. <laughs> There's at least 35 gold rings and at least 30 slaves that I can, can count going through just the 12 days. <laughs> it's like 10 pipers piping, yeah. that's three days in a row. Yeah. So it's, and I don't know why they have partridges and pear trees, but if you're going to secure a bird to a tree, it's probably something pagan. So. <laughs> And then Frost of the Snowman. Let's see if you guys can figure out who that's about. The legion of demons that Jesus cast into the pits. Obviously, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I see it. It took me this long to figure out. So. <laughs> I see. And I guess I'm kind of biased against Christmas music. Part of my Catholic upbringing has left me with scars for this Christmas. So, like, the first, I mean, actually, there are certain things about Christmas that will cause me to start shutting down physically. I'm sure like, if I kept getting it, I'd probably just go into a coma and die. Um, like, it's, it's like certain things just cause my brain to stop functioning. And as soon as I hear the first three notes of Silent Night, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> I don't need NyQuil, so just play Silent Night and I will be out. Like, Jasmine's was practicing that at some point. And it was it was a struggle. I'm having to like kind of pinch myself just to keep myself awake. Not to keep myself awake. It's, it's rough. It's rough. But, well, I'm wondering too, who came up with that song? Because I've talked to a lot of women here who have had kids, and nothing about birth sounds quiet. <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lot of women here, a lot of children, but I'm pretty sure if my wife's in the delivery room. 
And I say we should be more like Jesus and make this a silent night. <laughs> is still on my shoulders, I will probably be asked to leave. <laughs> I mean, there are also animals that make noise, but I, that's probably besides the point. I mean, if I'm Joseph and some random shepherds walk in and my wife gave birth, I'm probably going to be like, who are you? <laughs> I think I'm just going to sit there and not say anything. But anyway, so. I guess to make all of this summed up, let's keep, keep Christmas about Jesus and enjoy what we can. I'm trying to do my best, whether it's jokingly or not, although all my coworkers still call me a Scrooge for saying that 12 days of Christmas is about slavery. <laughs> <laughs> but Merry Christmas, none will this. <laughs> All right, bonus question. Who knows why the 12 Days of Christmas was even uh, a Christmas song? Who knows? James. It came from Yule. What's that? It came from Yule. It came from Yule. No, actually, there's a, a deeper meaning. Okay, does anybody know why the 12 Days of Christmas? The 12 Days of Christmas was actually birthed out of the struggle between the Protestant Church and the Catholic Church. And for a time, whichever one was in power, prevented the other from being able to worship as they wanted to worship. And so the 12 days of Christmas, each of those days was a symbol of something to do with the church, with, with Christianity. The partridge in the pear tree was Jesus on the cross. Okay, um, the, the uh, three French hands represented the three mages, the three wise men that came. And, and each of those things, do a little bit of study, take a look at it and, and find because each of those things represented something else. It wasn't about Lords of Lethan. Oh, good grief. Please don't. Okay? But, but each of those had a meaning, and so this whole song was a code that enabled them to share their faith and, and, and fellowship with one another in a way that wouldn't get them in trouble. So uh, nobody got that one, so this one's going in my pocket. All right. So next we have... Um, don't they look beautiful? Yes. It's so cute. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is our children's choir, and Jasmine has, has organized this and put this together, and Luke has slept through most of the practices, <laughs> and, and so Angie is, is accompanying them on the keyboard. So Jasmine, this is yours.
forgot to um, refresh myself on the, the story of this, but I know that um, Silent Night was originally um, was from in Austria, um, in a church where their organ broke down. Um, they didn't have their organs, so they wrote this song on the guitar. So originally it was a guitar song. And um, so I'm going to try to recreate that tonight. is going to be coming up and doing the song Falling in Love. Um, all right, so here's a two-part question. The first part should be pretty easy to get. I can't remember if I asked this or not. Uh, second part is going to be a little bit more difficult. First part, what was the name of the angel that came and spoke to Mary? Whoa, look at the hand shot up over here. Gabriel. Gabriel. All right, now here's the more difficult one. Coming at you. Right off the baby's head. <laughs> what does Gabriel's name mean? Come on, anybody, anybody? Come on, we have some. What, you, you know what Gabriel's name means? What does it mean? Declan? 
No. <laughs> That's another piece of candy for me. Okay, anybody? Come on, we have some Jewish scholars in here. Nope. I'll be out. Okay, you guys are lame. Okay, for next year, ready? Write it down. Gabriel means strength of God. Okay? He was a messenger. We know that he was delivered more than one message, but his name means strength of God. So, Laura, are you ready? Yes. Take it away. Break a leg.
All right, thank you, Laura. Okay, coming up next, we have... Uh, I lost my place. John Pease is doing two original songs, no titles available. Can I see how it's going? All right, so the song is actually no titles available. Which song? Both of them? Okay. All right. Okay, here's a, tr here's a question for you, a trivia question. What animals does the Bible say were present at Jesus' birth? Cow, you sir. Uh, I believe it was. I just it's just left. It just left your mind. Donkeys or sheep? Wrong. A mule. A mule. Wrong. A <laughs> uh, bat. Huh? Well, that, that's kind of a trick answer. Because, yeah, he, like, he was the lamb, but I'm not going to give that to him. <laughs> Although I will give her candy. Pass it back to Pat, please. All right. Camels? Camels, no! Actually, Scripture does not mention any animals being born or being there when Jesus was born. It says that he was in a stable, but it doesn't say that there were any animals there. Were there animals there? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. There, no. Okay, so are you ready, sir? I think so, yeah. All right, here we go. Scooch. All right, uh, I'm so glad to have my brother James Drummond on this one. Uh, but <laughs> pretty much got me following all the good people. Oh, uh, uh, this is a new song I wrote called uh, Break the Silence. Uh, this song, the Lord had brought to me. I I uh, actually had a children's show on my television that had an ad came on and my son Jackson being as awesome as he is came out and said dad there is a uh, guy saying bad stuff on TV and I came back in and there was a commercial in the mid, uh, middle of a pretty popular kid show and sure enough the ad was something so horrible that I myself wouldn't have probably watched it in my bad days. So it had disgusted me and I realized that, you know, we wonder sometimes why our country is going the way it is, why the world is going the way it is. And I sure don't see a lot of uh, men of God standing up though and getting loud about what we believe. So that's a lot of what this song is. Thank you. 
Does this song have a title? Uh, or is it kind of a family thing that there are no titles? You know, uh, its title is What It's All About. What It's All About. All right, real quick. Um, trivia question. Who spread the news about baby Jesus throughout Bethlehem? Who spread the news? Sierra. Herod? Herod, no. <laughs> Herod, no, we don't want Herod. Who? No, not really. Shepherd. Uh, who? No. I, I heard the answer over here somewhere. Shepherds. All right. Are you guys ready? Pretty much. Close enough. Scooch. Scooch. So this is a song, it's a disciple's prayer, and he's praying to God about what he wants Christmas to be about. Because I think we just don't take the time to ask. Have we ever asked God what he wants Christmas to be about? Or do we just take it in our own hands? So this is a prayer about it. Yes, God's response back and forth, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nice. And then, you guys wrote that? Yeah. Yeah, God gave it to me about five minutes. <laughs> five minutes ago? No, like in five minutes ago. Okay. Last week. <laughs> All right. So next up, we have Angie doing an original song. That seems to be the theme this year. Original songs. That's great. Um, this song is titled, Now Known by Us. Uh, trivia question. According to the Gospel of Luke, why did Joseph have to go to Bethlehem? Cool. Okay, I see a hand way back here. You guys are slow. Sasa. Well, with, yeah, he had to go with Mary. There was a hand over here that was up before yours, Joy. Census. Census. The point of the census was so that the uh, Romans would know how much to tax each person. They had to be registered in their hometown. And, you know, because God said that's where he was going to be born. That's really why they went. So, all right. Are you ready, Angie? I, um, yeah. Not yet? So, you want to do another question? Sure. All right. We'll do another question. Who mandated the census? Oh, I saw Joy's hand first. Oh, Which? Oh, great! I'm, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> being the baby in the head again? I'm not worried about being in the baby. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yes. Um, okay. This song I'm calling now known by us. Um, I was thinking about how the angels appeared and. And something Glenn talked about this morning was um, when, um, like, it, it made me think how the angels appeared and we um, kind of forget where Jesus used to be and how he came to a humble place to us, to humble people, to um, humble earth. And he was in the presence of multitudes of angels and um, the heavenly hosts worshiping him, and um, so I, I started the song, and only I wanted to add another verse, but I just didn't have time, and I felt I was supposed to do this tonight and have this tonight, but um, there's another verse to be added that I'm going to share what I have here. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oh, there she is. Okay. I didn't see her come in. All right, so next we have uh, Joanna and Angie. They're going to be doing a cello and violin duet. Um, joy to the world. So I'm going to give her a minute to come up and get set up, and everybody can stare at her and make her feel awkward. <laughs> feel awkward, Joanna? Okay. <laughs> Is that too tall? You would need something shorter than yes, one of those? Something shorter. Something shorter. Um, Benj, would you grab uh, one of the chairs back there? Or Satch? Oh, sorry, I didn't see you had a baby. Does it with one of these chairs work? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You guys know about cellists, right? <laughs> 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 They're kind of like the drummers, you know. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Who was governor in Syria when Jesus was born? Whoa! Don't just shout it out. I'm keeping this one. But your brother had his hand up first. What he said. Okay. So um, you already got candy, and you're diabetic, so you don't get any more. So, um, what? Well, <laughs> All right, you're on your way. All right. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, here's your trivia question. How many angels spoke to the shepherds? One! Perfect! How many angels sang? Wrong! Doesn't say they sang. The multitude of the host of heaven spoke, saying. Yes. Uh -huh. You guys owe me candy. All right, are you ready, sir? Almost. Maybe. Almost. All right, one more trivia question. Um, all right. So, um, well, let's see. We already did that one. Okay, we did that one. Um, what was the first thing the angel said to the shepherds? Oh, wait. I got a hand here. <laughs> Do you know Jackson? What did he say? Um? <laughs> that, that must be a translation I don't have. What's that? Fear not. Fear not. All right. Are you ready, sir? All right. Pete, take it away. Awesome. Good to see everybody tonight. Uh, the spirit of Christmas is present tonight, which essentially is a spirit of love, right? Giving, certitude sacrifice, passion, 
and uh, that should be present in our lives every day. And uh, just as our guy with the blue is your name, you were talking about earlier, about um, kind of the vain tradition and the of Christmas and how it's commercialized and we get caught up in the in the greed and what I can get right from the holiday. But if we're children of God, every day should be Christmas, Amen. right? And uh, we should be giving to our fellow man, and showing God to others through our lives. So, just felt led to share that tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Pete. I'm entangled with the Manels, so <laughs> they're stuck with me. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I'm going to sing "What Child Is This?" This song was written by William. Dix, uh, after he was struggling with a very serious illness in the 18, in 1865, it was written off the English, uh, the melody was written off the English folk song, Green Sleeves. So, um, so anyway. singing for years. What, what took you so long? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't Stay shy. You did good. Oh, yes, you did. Fantastic. All right. Trivia. Oh, next up we have Benjamin, Brian, and Luca doing another original song. <laughs> does, this, does this have a title? Right. No. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, all right, so the angel is speaking to the shepherds. What did he say would be assigned to them? <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you, Jackson. <laughs> oh, come on, somebody besides Anna Lisa. No. <laughs> Wrong group. The virgin will give birth. What would, and this will be assigned to you. You will. Find a babe in the manger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready? You are ready. All right. Here we go. So uh, we played the song last year, but I wanted to just say a few things about it this time around. Um, most of the time, when we talk about the birth of Christ, we talk about the Magi coming, the wise men from the East, as they're called, and we talk about the nice things like the shepherds and the baby and the manger and everything like that. We tend to forget the context of what's going on political turmoil and the bloodshed that accompanied the coming of the Messiah um, when he was first born and how his people reacted. And also uh, when he 
light came into his own. And John says, the light came into the darkness, and the darkness has not understood it. And um, yeah, when, by the time he had completed his course and was, was wrapping up his ministry, going to the cross, um, and they had rejected him, and he had said, um, you know, you, even you had known this thy day, the things that make for peace, but now these are hidden from your eyes. Um, speaking to his people Israel, to Jerusalem. Um, and uh, in fact, I can pull up that verse here because it's pretty, pretty incredible. But Jesus says and the things that he um, prophesies, even in line with um, with the apostles, or sorry, the prophets beforehand. So Luke 19, um, 41, he says, And when he drew near and saw the city, Jerusalem, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of their visitation. See, in the celebrate Easter time, the um, Palm Sunday, when he came in riding on the donkey, we celebrate that, but he wept as he was coming into the city, because they did not know the day of the Messiah coming to them. And so the first half of this song is about when he was born, and how they responded. And the second half is... Um, even after he had grown and accomplished all the things he did, how they responded after that and prophesied. Um, and so that's what this is all about. Bye. 
51. What gifts did the unnumbered Magi bring? I saw a hand. Jackson? <laughs> what? Didn't he get one already? He did. <laughs> Give that to him. <laughs> All right. Jasmine. Not candy. Not candy? I didn't ask what they didn't bring. <laughs> All right, Joy. Gold frankincense and myrrh. Gold frankincense and myrrh. Now we can get really the theologicalizing. Oh, forget it. Here, have candy. <laughs> Rick, would you hand that to her, please? <laughs> what? Mithril. Mithril. Oh, right. <laughs> we're, we're confusing stories here. <laughs> one is history, one is just yeah. made up. Okay, are you guys ready? C. C. All right, so we got Nathan, Benjamin, James, and Satch. Scott, sorry. Program says Thaddeus. What? Um, Who's Thaddeus? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're going to be doing the song Bethlehem by Theocracy. Uh, I'm going to start by reading the chapter from Luke that this was based on. This is Luke 2, starting in verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And his mother and his father marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Shines bright. 
with us. Uh, real quick, just, just a couple more questions because I still got candy left and I'm a diabetic so it's not coming home with me. Um, they already mentioned one person that received Jesus when he came in to be dedicated at the temple, Simeon. Who was the other person? Joanna. Anna. Oh, I dropped it. Here, coming at you. All right. Uh, too slow. All right. Um, when Herod heard that the wise men had departed by another way, they didn't come back to him, he was angry, and he sent his soldiers to kill all of the male children in Bethlehem, ages what? Right here, Kevin. 200. Kevin. 200. No, I thought Kevin. <laughs> Stand at the Kevin, please. And this is for you, because you did get it right. All right. Um, there's one other one. Okay, so an angel appeared to Joseph, told him what was coming, told him to relocate. Where did he tell him to relocate to? Oh, right here. Sierra was quick. Egypt. All right. All right. One last one. One last trivia question. All right, actually, if you get this one right, I'm just going to give you a handful. All right, ready? What is Pastor Glenn's favorite Christmas carol? Uh, all right, Joanna. What? No. No. Christopher, if you get it wrong, you're in trouble. What? Good call. Good call. Good call. Oh, holy night. Jingle bells. No. You don't have one. Give me an answer, dude. Every time I point at you, you choke. <laughs> wrong. Look. Part of this for Christmas. Wrong. Okay. Nope. All right, Addy. No, that one was already said. That used to be one of my favorites, but it's not. Wait a minute. Nope. Mary, did you know? No, all right, I'm going to give you a hint. Pete. 
What child is this? <laughs> there you go, Pete. Thanks, Pete. All right. So we are going to be wrapping up with O Holy Night. If you would, please stand to your feet. We'll sing the song, and then we're going to close with a word of prayer. Real quick, uh, I, 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 sorry I didn't say this earlier, but we had uh, Pastor Ken Scribner from uh, Bitterroot Family Church here with us tonight with a couple of his, actually one of his daughters is still here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't introduce him earlier. Uh, get a moment, stop by and say hello to them, tell them thank you for coming and participating with us. So, it is up to you guys.